Hello everyone, it is Joe here from Omnipoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon. If you're looking for PTCGO codes and where to get them, you can go ahead and check out the Potown store. You can even use the Omnipoke code for additional 5% discount. Jumping into today's video, we are going to be looking at the Sheffield Regional Championships that have just gone by last weekend. We're going to be looking at as many deck lists from the top 8 as possible and having a better overview of the decks that made day 2 as well. So. The winning archetype was actually uh, David Ferreira with his Guardian build. Now, Guardian was an archetype that was really picked up on from a lot of the players at Worlds. It was kind of like the secret Worlds deck. And it's gone and won uh, one of the first regionals um, we have had in the season as well, which is really incredible. Um, David actually had a decklist error as well. He was unable to play with custom catchers. I'm not sure at what point. Uh, but he had to play an additional four fairy energy for no custom catchers, and he was still able to win the entire thing, which I think is pretty impressive. Um, so yeah, maybe a no custom catcher Guardian is the way to go. <laughs> but regardless, um, I think Guardian is definitely one of these decks that can go up and down in popularity based on how popular it is. Um, it can be kind of like that boogeyman in the room for some archetypes, obviously the fairy charms. Give you an edge against things like Picarom and Mewtwo to a certain extent. Picarom can obviously play labs. Mewtwo doesn't really have many answers outside of trying to use that Latios. Um, so it tries to stalemate at the very least or give some of these decks a hard time uh, with the amount of healing and the charms that it has available. And it can still just out aggress a handful of other archetypes as well with all the sort of uh, damage removing it can do on its own end. So yeah, really impressive to see that come first. I was not expecting it to do that well. It wasn't a hugely popular archetype, but it did end up taking uh, first place as well as another top 16 placement by a teammate, Stephen Mao, um, as well. So, yeah, a handful did pretty well with the build. In a second, we do have Logan's list of Pika Rom. It's a judge based build of Pika Rom. Uh, the Pokemon count is pretty uh, standard, it only plays one copy of Raichu Raichu. Um, it has made space for one Hooper as a non GX attacker. It doesn't play any uh, Zapdos whatsoever. It's just playing one um, Hooper, so quite low on the Pokemon side. It has opened up spaces for him to play a few other cards here and there. Um, he's just playing the four Volkner, four Judge, four Radar, four E-Power, four Customs. Uh, it's got the two E-Switch, the two Comms. Everything's pretty self-explanatory. He's got himself the one Reset Stamp as well as the four Judge, so a lot of hand disruption available. Um, he's got the one Choice Helmet in here, which is quite rare to see in Pika Rom. Um, I don't know if there's anything specifically uh, that it's in here for. I can imagine that it's pretty good in like Pika Rom Mirrors and a handful of other matches um, just for keeping things out of range. You can even st stick this onto Dene's uh, to put them out of sniping range of things like Naganadel against Mewtwo. So it's a versatile one of um, that I'm sure he got value of throughout the weekend. Um, I don't think there's anything specifically that it's in here for. Maybe it helps against some like flare striking combos with like Outrage or something, but. I imagine this is more often than not a mirror card, but just damage reduction is so flexible that the one-off can be good in all sorts of spots. He's playing Labs as his stadium of choice, so we did see Kaiwen do well with Power Plants, but Labs is still the way to go for Logan. And obviously, um, there were things like Guardian in the room and stuff, which I believe he beat like earlier in the day as well. I think on day one, he at least beat one Guardian, so yeah, definitely helpful. Um, and then 11 lightning energy, so yeah, pretty decent shell. I think the only like question mark card is the helmet um, Usually you see this as like a second choo-choo or just like a Zapdos or something like that, but that's the tech card of his choice um, Everything else is pretty self-explanatory Pika judge that we know is a pretty strong archetype Fabian made it into top four with Pidgeotto control um, He's playing uh, five energy cards, which is way higher than normal. Normally you just see the three, well, I say way higher sometimes. It's usually like three water and a recycle, but yeah. Um, it's playing uh, one of the 50 hit point Pidgeys and then a bunch of 60 hit point Pidgeys. I don't know if that's min-maxing or if he just couldn't find an extra 60 hit point one. Um, but he's got uh, the Pidgeotto is the full line, the double Articuno and the Mew. Uh, it's got three copies of Mars, which I'm a huge fan of. Whenever I tested this archetype, I always wanted to have additional Marses, so I'm happy to see that. It's got the two Cynthia, two Tetanizer split, uh, all the four orbs of the important stuff. Um, but yeah, it's just a very straightforward Pidgeotto control build by the looks of things, playing three Power Plant as well. Really high on that count. Um, yeah, it just seems very straightforward. 
Uh, we know what Pidgeotto Control is trying to do at this point, and uh, he clearly was able to do it very well. There was a few other builds of Pidgeotto Control. I know Sander and Maze, a few um, notable players, were fighting Pidgeotto Control with an element of Steven's Resolve in their builds as well um, to help them come back from um, like opposing judges and stamps and stuff, which is quite interesting to see. But the straightforward um, build that we've come to know from Worlds is the one that came out uh, highest. Also on top four, we saw a Blacephalon. It's playing the 16 energy split with the one Psychic. It's got uh, one Heatran in the build. It's got the Mew. It's got two Naga GX. So very similar to Shintaro's Pokemon line, but with just one Heatran instead of two. Uh, it's playing full Welder, full Cynthia, one Bill's Analysis is a very interesting include, as well as the full four B string. So he's made space for the full four. Um, and from there, everything else looks pretty straightforward. Uh, yeah, a relatively simple Blacephalon at this point. The Bill's Analysis and the 4B string is really the only um, thing that is worth noting compared to Shintaro's second place list. Um, very high on the ball search, which I'm pretty happy to see as well with three Ultra Space. So really, really high on the Pokemon search counts, which yeah, definitely uh, makes me happy. I think that's really a nice build of Blounds for sure. Uh, Gustavo got in top eight with um, Ability Zard. Um, he was... I believe second or first seed after day one, almost undefeated. I think he went 8-1 uh, day one, which is really impressive. We don't see his list, unfortunately. Robin's list, however, and the same list Tord played to a top 16, um, is a very interesting adaptation of the build. It's kind of like the process from going from, okay, here's the big tag team that smacks, and Victini can come in and finish the game on a tag team. Obviously, there's then the question mark of people adding in Wobbuffet to their builds, so they've completely changed it up again and gone towards 13 Fire Energy and 4 Fire Crystal, as well as 1 Fiery Flint in the build, to now give them the opportunity to smack things with a different non-GX, and that's Blacephalon with Fireball Circus. So I really do like this include. Um, I, tra I tried a different variation of Ability Zard for Sheffield. I tried to add in the Mewtwo package with um, the new Tin Charizard and the uh, Mag Cargo. But the Limitless guys, they went for the uh, Fireball Circus route, and I think it's a really powerful one, to be honest. Um, they also found space for third Vulpix, which is a huge relief, because just getting Ninetales wins games. Um, they obviously still do have the Victini. It has less like firepower um, behind it when you only play 13 energy cards, but I still think it's very strong at dealing with like Keldeos, Blacephalons, um, the Denes on Gust and stuff, so it's still very powerful for sure for uptrading. Uh, everything else is pretty much straightforward with the Pokemon lines. Um, it made space for a reset stamp now. I'm not certain on how much I like this card. Obviously, it's a great one if it's in the bottom half of your deck. If it's in the top half, you're pretty sad to see it go when you delay change it away. Uh, that said, everything else I really like in the build. It's also playing four copies of Switch. Um, no Super Scoop up in this build. I think there's too much one-hit KO around right now. Um, for Super Scoop Up to be that viable, and you can see they've gone more aggressive on the non-GX route anyway. Um, so really Charizard only comes into play when he needs to. Um, so the four switches just lets you, uh, sorry, uh, Stellar Wish even more, gets you out of Turtonator from being trapped, it does all sorts for you, and also it helps defend against Absol if that was going to be a tech card coming into the meta as well, um, after seeing how well Jirachi was doing. So yeah, four switch, definitely a nice include as well in the build. Um, I really do like this 60. Um, as you can see, Tor played it to 11th place in Sheffield as well. Uh, whoops. And yeah, definitely a successful transition away from the theme deck of 18 energy. Now it still has like 18 cards dedicated to finding energy. Actually, it plays like 21 cards dedicated to finding energy because it plays the hearths, the flints, and the crystals. So it's still theme deck esque in that regard, but um, it plays less physical fire energies for sure this time. Jack Colkin was able to make top 8 with a uh, Greens build of Zard that plays a very spicy Lugia GX to Lost Purge things, which is pretty insane. Um, it can also just deal a decent amount with Psychics and uh, Pelagic Blade, I want to say. I don't know what that's called, but yeah. I don't know why the Lugia is in here. It might just be for dealing with threats that you otherwise couldn't, um, but I'm not super sure what this is helping against. Um, other than just like Lost Purging, a threat that you really can't deal with. So yeah, definitely an interesting one there. Obviously Lost Purging away energies means they can't be accessible for like Victini and stuff, but I'm not certain on what it's there for in particular. So I'll have to 
sort of give you guys a rain check on that. If you guys know in the comments, get it in the discussion down below so people can uh, catch up on that. But yeah, definitely a spicy card for sure. Um, he's playing uh, the four customs, the four herbs, the two great pots. It's got the heavy crystal. He's playing the Lucimine package with a double power plant, the half, the shrine, the factory. No copies of labs, um, but I think he's got enough healing in the list already. Uh, just the one reset stamp, the one switch. Yeah, it looks more or less a um, regular green zard from then on, other than the Lugia being the spice. Uh, so it might be something I have to try out in future. Um, but yeah, more or less just a regular um, green zard. Looks like the top performing decks were all just straightforward builds of the decks that we know are strong, essentially. And Brian is no exception. He was playing Pika Rom. I think it's, he said it's the same list he played for Worlds, basically. Um, he's playing the 2-2-2. Um, he's playing his Sigilyph for Mirror Counter. Literally trying to be a Mirror Counter. Um, it's got the Guru in here as well. Something you don't often see in Pika Rom, But it can be nice for getting back some key pieces like customs and powers and stuff. Um, he plays three Reset Stamp as well, which is a super high count. Um... Especially with four Volkner, that's a really interesting thing about his list for sure. Um, you can see he got top 32 at Worlds with the 60, so he's obviously very comfortable with Pika Rom, and he knows it inside and out at this point. He's playing the three E switch, two tag switch, so it's obviously the non Jirachi build has space for more of these raw uh, outs, I guess you could say. He's playing Labs and Mountain, so Labs seems to have won out over in Europe this weekend over power plants and obviously it's playing the Cynthia Volkner split with the hand disruption coming from stamp rather than uh, anything else which is really cool to see um, we see Sen unfortunately bubbled once again <laughs> in ninth. Uh, it's crazy how much this man bubbles I really do feel bad for him um, he's actually bubbled at my expense before as well in Lille um, so I do feel his pain it's happened a lot to him way more than anyone should um, but yeah he was playing straight Mewtwo um, he was playing the new Charizard and uh, Magcargo package. He was playing all the usual shenanigans, really. He had the Warp, the Marshadow, everything that you expect. He's playing the Four Welders as well as just one copy of Bills. Um, he's playing Maximum Counts of Cherish, Customs, um, Treasures, the Bikes. Everything looks more or less straightforward. I think Palpad's the only inclusion that's that different from... The World 60, I think Palpad is basically the only change. It's playing Reset Stamp as well, which I don't believe was played at Worlds, so really not too different again from the World 60s. Basically, the rundown is the top performing decks this weekend were just straightforward builds of the list that we saw do very well at Worlds. People weren't all that ingenuitive. It looks like the lists from Worlds were all very well ironed out. There's a few tweaks here and there, like the Wobbuffet and the Charizard coming in. And then some personal preference changes like the power pad and stamp. But more or less, they're just like, well, these are well iron 60s. Let's just stick with them and see how it goes. So I think really um, Robin and Tor's lists are like the ones that are the biggest change. Everyone else keeping more or less the same. Uh, we see more Charizard and more Mewtwo. We see um, Guardian, another Picaron. Yasin was one of the, I think he was top seed after day one. He had a rough day two. And then one Malamar reaches top 16 with Consta. Um, it's an Ultra Mali build, just the two metal, one Ultra. Um, still having... Oh, wow, it plays the Dene. Interesting. It plays the Dene in its build. Uh, it's playing Customs. I think Customs definitely are important if you want to beat Ability Zard. you got to use Customs, because you got to custom up their Ninetales to stop them gusting around at your spell tags. But your spell tags start getting value, and you can actually use the Ultra to win, so... I think a lot of Mallys that did do well this weekend actually added in custom to their build, and I think it's definitely a really nice include. This has also made space for double reset stamp as well for some hand disruption. Also a card that's getting way stronger recently just because um, all these decks playing so many like energy cards and stuff and only a low support account can get punished by the stamp. So reset stamp becoming much more of a threat in the format for sure. Um, so yeah, nice to see Malamar round out the top 16. It was definitely quite a popular deck uh, still in Sheffield. It was played in reasonable numbers. Um, we'll have a quick rundown in a bit better detail now with the good old CCG pie chart. You can go ahead and check them out on Facebook. Complexity Card Gaming Pokemon. My own face is in the way of what it is, but there you go. You can see it there. Um, you can go ahead and check them out. Um, 
this is the top 55 from Sheffield. Uh, obviously, Guardian taking the W there. And the rest of the decks were... The majority was Ability Zard, 26%. Uh, Pika Rom in at 15% as well as Mewtwo Mew getting 15%. Malamar still claiming a decent chunk. I think after the big backlash of Worlds, it was one of those things where people were like, oh, this performs so terribly. Suddenly there are less mirror matches. Suddenly there are less ties for Malamar. It gets slightly more good matchups as well with Mewtwo becoming, you know, a more relevant, strong deck um, because a lot of the Mallys are moving towards Recycle Energy and um, Power Plant combos. You're literally actively looking for Mewtwo's um, there's like an anti-meta option. If you add in customs, your Ability Zard matchup gets stronger. Um, and people have basically gone away from Tina Chomp altogether and have gone mainly towards Psychic builds. If not, they're adding in like the 1-1 Ultra package, something like that. So yeah, Green Zard still keeping up in there alongside Blounds. Pidgeot to Control, Guardian as well, just a couple. And then we also saw Quagnag, Keldeo Bronzong, Shedinja piloted... Um, by Alessandro, and also there was one dark box which I believe ended pretty low on the list, unfortunately. Uh, Andrew Spence there from the UK playing it. We don't see a list, unfortunately, but one managed to squeak through. I think there was a decent amount of dark box as well in the field. I faced two in Sheffield, which I think is, um, I think I would have been one of the only ones to only play a couple of those, but yeah. Um, interesting stuff overall um, I like the adaptations that we saw a lot of these like I said are more sort of personal preference changes from the top eight um, we see both builds of Picarom still doing well so that debate's still out there there are still people who swear by the strong supporters plus stamp and then there are some who are just like let me just judge people real quick after I've got my you know first initial radar attached down and see if they can react to early full blitz pressure um, and both are doing really well. So, yeah, both Zards still continue to do well. We see uh, Jacob also getting 10th place with the, with the green space build. So there's a lot of debates going on right now. What's the best Pika? What's the best Charizard? Um, what's the best way to play? Blounds are still kind of up in the open. We're seeing U2 start to creep in with Wobbuffet Tex and the new Charizard GX as well. And that's obviously just been pipped to the post, unfortunately coming in at night, but also grabbing a few top 16 spots. So... Definitely all seems pretty powerful stuff and um, it's pretty cool to see for the future. So yeah, hope you all enjoyed guys. Let me know down below what you think about these results and if anyone knows about that Lugia, I'd like to hear more about it. So thanks for watching guys and I'll see you tomorrow for another video.